Hello guys, welcome back. Let's discuss the Glock 23, probably the most popular launcher of 40 caliber. In contrast to popular belief, I refuse to acknowledge that 40 has lost popularity. While the FBI might have stopped using the said caliber, it still enjoys decent popularity among civilians. And anyone who knows a bit about guns will tell you that the Glock 23 is the best you can get for the 40 caliber. Just as the Glock 19 is the best selling 9mm, the Glock 23 is probably the best selling 40 caliber in the civilian market. Much has been said and written about the previous generations of the Glock 23, but it typically starts with the 40 caliber and ends there. I know some of you do not like the 40 SNW anymore, which is fine. But just because law enforcement agencies have cut down its use does not mean the rounds are incapable. I mean, it is the same caliber law enforcement agencies around the United States have used for years. But we will settle that debate some other time. In this video, let's just focus on the latest Gen 5 Glock 23 and the changes the Australian firearm manufacturer has made to the newest generation of the Glock 23. I have had the 5th generation for quite a while now, and I have spent a decent time with it to form an informed opinion about the handgun. So let's just get to it. Grooves. You knew it, right? I mean, one cannot start discussing Gen 5 without mentioning finger grooves and Gen 4. After all, it was the most maligned feature for most Glock owner. To be honest, I, for one, liked those finger grooves. But again, Glock had to submit to what most Glock owners wanted and remove the grooves from the grip. The newer models have light texture instead of finger grooves with a straight surface, something that Glock users are familiar with. For me, it is a downgrade. But again, it is very subjective and many of you might disagree with me. That said, the one thing I really liked was the grooves on the sides. Especially with the OEM slides that are introduced in Gen 5, you would want the grip to slide forward for the ejection port. Plus, it also makes it easier to track the rack. Other design changes. Slides of the Gen 5 are boxy looking, yet somehow have managed almost the same width as Gen 4. Edges on the newer generation feature less tampering, and the corners are beveled. Now, there are a couple of theories about why firearm manufacturers have inclined toward the beveled corners. Some believe it protects the holster from wear, whereas others find it easier to holster. Either way, it is a nice thing to see, even when it does not really impact much on the overall performance of the handgun. I was reading some opinions on Reddit, and some owners expressed concerns about the increased clearance between the frame and the slides. While these concerns are genuine, they should not bother you. In civilian settings, the likelihood of malfunctions because of sand and dust penetration is pretty low. But yes, it is another issue if the military decides to service it. And you know, just as much as I do, the odds of that happening are pretty slim. Much like Gen 4, the finish on the Gen 5 seems quite durable, but it is not something I can say with certainty as my Glock 23 has not been subjected to much abuse as of yet. However, the newer generation is certainly more glossy, like the finger grooves, some people will like it while others will not. And again, not something that has any impact on the overall performance of this handgun. However, one that does impact the performance is the trigger function, which is genuinely improved in the next generation. As per the Glock, Gen 5 has 7% less pull than Gen 4, but to tell you honestly, the difference feels a lot more when you shoot the guns in tandem with each other. The Gen 5 models do not feel clunky, which most of you would love. With the newer generation, the Glock has also addressed the concerns of left-handed shooters. Now a slide stop is available at both sides of the gun, making it a true ambidextrous. Glock has always modified the stop levers, which I find easier to reach and operate. However, I have a haunch, much like finger grooves, it is something that not all Glock owners will appreciate. You see, some of you might find the grip interfering with the slide top which will prevent the slide from going back to lock once the magazine is emptied. But again, pretty subjective change. While discussing the design changes, it is important to mention that the 5th gen is a bit wider, which might have fitting problems with some holsters. The magazine well is also wider, which I think people new to guns will quite like. It enables quicker reloads. However, some people believe that one should rather rely on training for faster and more efficient reloads. If you ask me, I'm all in for training, but having a tolerant magwell does not hurt. Austrian firearm manufacturers have also described some changes in the rifling and crown of the barrel to make the gun more accurate. However, to be honest, from the naked eye, there is not much that it does differently from the previous generations. 
And it is not like accuracy has ever been an issue with the Glock products. Anyway, I guess it might make some difference in the accuracy if tested by sophisticated equipment. But as far as personal protection is concerned, you would not feel any difference. On the range performance. While the difference between the two generations does not seem much on the surface, I was a bit surprised by the performance on the range. The newer Glock 23 feels more smooth, and the muzzle rise is also a bit lower than the previous generation. I guess it is probably because of the thicker and a bit heavier slides along with the dual recoil spring, which reduces the recoil significantly. Furthermore, the shot feels softer than the Gen 3 and 4 models. Besides these, as I discussed earlier, the trigger feels smoother and more fun. As for the grip, yes, I noticed a difference in the feel owing to a lack of finger grooves, but I would not say that it had much impact on the overall performance of handguns on the rain. I could get the same accuracy as I would with the previous generation. Lastly, reliability has never been a problem with Glock. It is a brand that guarantees premium performance and lives up to even with the newest generation. I know it is still too early to conclude anything about the 5th gen, but from the looks of it, I do not think it would be any less reliable than the previous generations. It is the job of a business to cater to all types of audiences, and it is exactly why, despite the dying love for 40 SNW, Glock continues to tap the market. I would not comment on whether or not the 40 SNW is dying, but I can say with certainty if you want to shoot a 40 SNW, there is no better launcher than the Glock 23. As for those wondering whether the newer generation is worth the upgrade, well, simply put, it depends on your preference. I definitely like the new trigger and the ambidextrous design of the Gen 5. Plus, the recoil management is also a bit better for the newer generation. However, if it was not for this video, I probably would have restrained myself from spending half a grand. I mean, there are some improvements, but I'm not sure they are worth that much. If I were you, I would rather purchase a new gun that I have not used before. But hey, as I have mentioned repeatedly, it all comes down to personal preferences. So, if you feel the improvements are good enough and offer the value, sure, go for it. That is all for this video. I hope it has been a fun and informative video. Tell me what you think of it in the comments and stay connected with the channel to learn more about guns and everything else around them. As always, I will see you at the next one.